I was born 400 years ago in the highlands of Scotland. I am immortal, and I am not alone. Now is the time of the gathering, and the stroke of a sword will release the power of the quickening. In the end, there can be only one. Here we are, born to be kings. We're the princes of the It's always awkward when the pupil goes back to visit his old teacher. He was a mortal, Grayson. You didn't have to kill him. You planted him in my organization to spy on me. He won't be the last old one. I shall hunt down your protégés one by one until you sicken of it and come out of sanctuary to fight me. Will it please you that much to destroy me? Immensely. You could have been one of the greatest rulers in the history of the world. Instead, you cower on holy ground. It was 1,400 years ago. But for you, the world hasn't changed. Look outside your cloister. What has changed? The means of destruction only. You are a fool. Who's next? I'm afraid you'll have to guess. Shouldn't be too hard for a man of your insight into a person's soul. It's Paulus, isn't it? Grayson! You believed in me once. I didn't change. You did. Well, I'm really flattered. <laughs> I'll give you my answer as soon as I can. Yes, thank you. Goodbye. Put it over here. What was that, another commission? No. That was the Bureau of Arts and Monuments in Paris. I've been selected to curate an historical retrospective on sculpture and form. Oh. So that means you would, like, uh, sit in a museum all day and curate? Actually, no. It's a traveling exhibition. It'll be on tour. So you'd have to travel with it? No, I wouldn't. But uh, the post is in Paris. That's where the collection will be gathered. It's a hell of a commute. It's not a flyover kind of job. Is it? Hold it, hold it. Time out. One second here, guys. You're not thinking of uh, 
closing up the shop here, jamming an old gay Paris, are you? I mean, you guys have got a big investment here. You know, I mean, I'm talking about in terms of uh, uh, time and, and, and effort in, in building up a clientele and a reputation. I mean, I mean, you guys got to think of these things, you know. I mean, they take years. It just doesn't happen overnight. I'll get it. I'm not asking you to do that. I know. It's for you, Mac. It's from Paris. You opened it. I'm just doing my job. Runes. Ancient runes. Looks like something out of a pet cemetery. It's from Darius. Darius? The priest? And I take it that all this makes a whole lot of sense to you, right? It's written in a language that died almost 2,000 years ago. Darius taught it to me. He's almost that old. What does it say? Someone's paying me a visit. An immortal? Grace. All right, I'll play. Who's Grace? He's one of Doris's protégés. But he's like one of the good guys, right? Right. So this Gracian guy's got you pretty spooked, huh, Mac? Hey, that's all right. You don't got to tell me. Richie, this isn't about fear. It's about strategy. Strategy? Yep. All right, you ready to start training? Start training. So what makes this Gracian guy so different from the others? He's 1,400 years older than I am. He's one of the few ancient immortals left. He's been a warlord most of that time. You don't just go up to him with your sword and say it's, it's ungodful. Ow! <laughs> so, Mac, what's this connection between Grayson and Darius? Darius was once one of the great generals. Grayson was his second in command. 1,500 years ago, Darius could have led his armies across Europe and ruled for a 1,000 years. But he turned his armies back. Grayson felt betrayed and never forgave him. And Darius, ever since, has tried from holy ground to be a peacemaker. Why would he do that? It's only legend. Yeah, well, come on, Mac. With you guys, what else is there? The legend has it that Darius killed the holy man at the gates of Paris, the oldest living immortal at the time. And suddenly he changed. He turned his back on war. You think that this holy guy's quickening went to Darius and made him good? Well, does that mean that, like, if a really good immortal, like, chopped the head off a really bad ancient immortal, that he could, you know? Can I help you? Admiring only. I have two others, just like it. Really? They were stolen from the Rins Cathedral during the French Revolution. How did you get them? I'm afraid I'm quite a collector of ecclesiastical art. From that period and others. Souvenirs of my travels. And you collect them because they remind you of Darius and how much you hate him. 
Very good. I see McLeod has kept you abreast of many things. I wonder if that's wise. It won't work. You can't blackmail Duncan. I rather think I can. And now, after seeing you in the flesh, I'm more convinced than ever. You are a remarkable woman. Well worth keeping alive. If you think he will stand by and let Victor Pauls be killed, you have misjudged him terribly. So you'd better kill me now and be done with it. Truly remarkable. But then you'll have to face him. But you know that, don't you? That's why you want to bargain with him using me. You're afraid of Duncan MacLeod. You've quite convinced me, Miss Noel. I won't bargain with him. Tell him. I'll be in touch. He'll never know you were here. What do you say, Mac? About time we go inside now? You can go in if you want. What was that? Cougar. Well, don't worry, they're not on this island. Please tell me that they don't swim. Actually, they're pretty good swimmers. Oh, actually, that's great. <laughs> oh, boy. So, Mac, what do these things say exactly? I mean, it's got to be more than just Grayson arrives on the noon stage, sharp and sore, various. Here, check that one out. Victor Paulus. Darius was his mentor as well. Victor Paulus? I've heard of that dude. He's like that guy that uh, uh, gives all those speeches, leads rallies and stuff, right? <laughs> he's one of you guys. Mm -hmm. No, he's one of you guys. <laughs> he doesn't know anything about me or about immortals. Darius thinks he's in danger. Why doesn't he warn him? He has. That's not going to stop Victor Paulus. He's a man with a mission. Yes. So is Grayson. So which one of you is he going to go after first? I wish I knew. What? Mac, were, uh, were you, uh, did Darius ever change you? Yeah, I guess he did. I was born of a warrior people. When war came, I, I chose sides like most men. I fought. I killed. I'm McLeod. I am Darius. You won't need that. Put him down here. Sir. Those whom we cannot heal, we bury to prevent disease. Infection kills more than all the English and French cannons. The surgeon said he would die of infection to bring him straight here. Perhaps I can save him. From the fevers, how? Give me that tin cup and fill it with snow.
Here. Hold this. There are medicines which have been lost to modern doctors. Take hours. Hours? Yes. Well, how goes the battle? <laughs> Why does that matter to you? Napoleon may lose a campaign. Wellington may win a great victory. What if they really won or lost? Their reputation? These men have been robbed of their most precious possession. Forever. I was raised a warrior. I choose battles I believe to be just. Oh, I'm sure. You're quite loyal to your convictions and compatriots. But I wonder what these men think about that, about convictions and compatriotism now. superior adversary. So why do I hope to be Grayson? Why do I think that a good life will protect me from an evil one? What power can I draw from this thing? This hope? You still have energy for this? Couldn't sleep. I didn't want to wake you. The empty bed woke me. What is it? This is from Grayson. Why didn't he? He will. When it suits him. We're live here at the waterfront. Mr. Wade. The helicopter bearing Victor Paulus will be landing momentarily. And we do hope to get an interview with this dogged crusader, whom some consider as a future candidate for the Nobel Peace Prize. Victor Paulus. I'm not sure if he was hit in this attempt, but... Now. 
We're unaware of his condition at this time. Here they come. Stand back. Need a ride? Wherever you're going. Excuse me? I mean, all I have to do is stick with you. You'll lead me to a breaking news story. I'm just lucky that way. Come on, McLeod. If, if the FBI and the CIA were half as good as the outfit you work for, I'd sleep better at night. Or maybe I'd stay awake and worry. You're the one who thinks I belong to a secret organization. Out. That is not a denial. <sighs> you talk like the White House press secretary. I mean, who are you guys? Just a hint. What, anti-terror squad? Federal crime task force? Eagle Scouts? Come on, give. Uh, just a group of history buffs. Yeah, and bird watchers. Just some background. I won't blow your cover. Even if I did, no one would believe you. Sorry. I can't help. All right, then. Who wants Paulus dead? I mean, the guy feeds starving refugee kids. He keeps men with overactive hormones from blowing civilians to bits with mortars. Answer that one yourself and you have yourself a story. <laughs> Arms dealers? You're serious. I have to go. Yeah, I know. You have a report to make. Sincerely hope I see you again. Yeah, right. You might not? You know, I've been thinking. You should go to Paris. Show the arts and monuments people you're anxious for the job. Who says I am? I do. But that's not why you want me to leave. Well, staying here won't change things. Then I'll stay. This Grayson won't hurt me, will he? Or you would have said something by now. No, he probably won't. It's not his style. But I don't want to risk it. Darius will know where to hide you if anything goes wrong. You're going to face him, aren't you? Even though he's a thousand years older and more powerful than you. If he kills you, what will that prove? Will Victor Paulus be saved then? Will I? Someone once said that peace in international affairs is nothing more than a period of cheating between two periods of fighting. For some nations, peace is simply a time to rebuild armies, stockpile weapons, and plan strategies. For others, Sadly, it's a time to do nothing. As we stand here, safe, comfortable, engaging in rational discourse, somewhere men, women, and children are dying. We cannot be truly at peace when somewhere else there is war or hunger or violence. In the face of violence, we must insist on none. Violence. Weapons have no dominion over the souls of men, so put your weapons down. Put your weapons down. Take what is here and leave. These are worthless pewter. Where is your gold? Gold? I have none. Anyone in the quarter would have told you that. Another priest. We are blessed. Where is Darius? The priests in this quarter are a surly lot, aren't they, boys? 
You made a mistake. I'm no priest. Attack! Kill innocent people who can't rise from the dead. Why have you done this? What else was I supposed to do, Darius? Tell me that. I can't be like you. Maybe I'm not old enough or wise enough. I just can't stand by and let. You're leaving me? Yes, I'm going to America. The hatred's just run too deep here. Maybe it'll be different in the new world. I would not rob you of that hope. Goodbye, Darius. Goodbye, Duncan McLeod. Peace be with you. Terrible diseases have been conquered because dedicated men went from failure to failure until they succeeded. We can, we must do no less for our children. Thank you. Uh, thank you for coming out in this weather. Inspiring, wasn't it? Oh, but I forgot. You turned away from Darius's teachings a long time ago. That did make me his enemy. Just not a disciple. I've wanted to meet you for so long. But you know how busy one gets. Holy ground is useful for business discussions. Someone spoiled a very carefully laid little plan yesterday. It was you, wasn't it? You know, his fellow Scott said something about the plans of mice and men. What do you want, Grayson? An understanding. An understanding that for every action, there is an equal and adverse reaction. Should you insist on protecting Darius's star pupil, I might, for example, cease to offer my protection to those around you. I protect those around me. I'm prepared to offer you a deal, Duncan McLeod. One that I rarely make. Why? Let's just say I'm a risk manager. Keeping you neutral is simply good business. All you have to do is nothing. Just that. Nothing. And I will spare both you and your lady for the rest of her natural life. Oh, I see it's true what they say about you. You have become emotionally entangled with these mortals. Go to hell. <laughs> they also say you're a man of action rather than words. Those were ill-chosen, and I'll ignore them. But if you interfere with my plans again, neither you nor those you love will ever be safe. No one's ever safe, Grayson. Not even you. Safe from what? It's just an observation in the human condition. Grayson? I don't know the name. He's not exactly a public figure. But if he were an arms merchant, he wouldn't need to be. The counselor behind the curtain, the invisible man. I like that. How do you know him? While we're on the subject, how do you know Victor Paulus? We have a friend in common. Take it out for you. Whoa! This feels like a permanent move. 
It might be. I don't know. Yeah, well, hey, you know, that's cool. You know, no roots, no bonds, no liabilities. Richie. Let me just ask you one question, Tess. Why are you going to Paris now? I, I will only distract Duncan. He'll think more clearly if I'm not around. Yeah, we should be more worried about you being alone in Paris with all those French dudes. That's why you're going with her. To protect her from all those French dudes. It's for me. Let's take it to Paris. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. <laughs> what can I say? How am I going to communicate? Sign language. Ah. Uh... Bonjour. Uh, ça va? Merci. Uh, Passez-moi le bar. We'll work on it. <laughs> oh, Mac. Thank you. Go on, pack. Right, right. I got a pack. Um. I'm not gonna have to, like, uh, eat uh, frogs or snails or anything like that, right? I mean, no, I'm serious. I mean, at least not right away, right? <sighs> Pack. Right, right, right. I thought he should go with you. Yeah. I'll take you to the airport. If you think I'm going to let you say goodbye to me at the airport, Duncan McLeod, think again. I'll call a cab. When are you facing Grayson? So. Remember, Paris is our city. I'll be waiting for you. Things will kill me. I'm ready. What's the rush? Do you really think there's something waiting for us after this? Darius does. But you're smarter than he is. What do you know about me? Oh, I'm quite a student of your exploits. Almost a fan. You have immense potential. You may not realize this, but there are few like you left. I've killed so many. Shame to waste you just yet. Why don't you come and work for me, McLeod? Oh, not long, only a century or so. We could do so much. With the gathering near at hand, what makes you think any of us have a century left? Ah, well, then I promise you this. You and I will be the last two immortals left on Earth. We can fight it out then for the ultimate prize. And Victor Paulus will die. You don't even know him. Think of what's at stake. Can one stranger be worth such a loss? You're only doing this to hurt Darius. Not hurt him. Destroy him. Then why bargain with me? Maybe I like you. Come on. What do you say, Duncan McLeod of the Clan McLeod? Have you no taste for greatness? I can be only one. Foolish lie. <laughs> 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 You're lucky as well. You've been reprieved. Grayson. Soon. We're here. 
here at the Sterling Hotel where Victor Paulus is giving his final conference. He's invited a small group of businessmen and politicians where he will be twisting arms and winning over a few stony hearts. Excuse me, sir. We've paid one of the security men. He'll lead Paulus right to our people. You're here because of this, Grayson, aren't you? If you really care, go back inside. Jaded journalist types don't fall for lines like that. Jaded journalist types don't care. I think you do. Don't let first impressions fool you. Good luck, McLeod. Saved my life again. Why are you? Who are you? I'm a friend of Darius. You didn't learn this from Darius. Well, I wasn't much of a student. Freeze. You okay? I'm all right. Thanks to this gentleman. There's another one in the elevator. Find out who paid him. Who is it? Someone once said that peace is great. Mr. Grayson? It is Grayson, isn't it? I saw you talking to McLeod the other day. Any idea who's trying to kill Victor Paulus? Well, excuse me. Sulfur! That was the beginning of it. The Chinese used it to amuse. It took someone a vision to see its true use. To create from it gunpowder. And the world was never the same again. What about you, McLeod? Ever done anything that really changed the world? 
Too bad. Now you never will. Oh. 
I heard from Victor Paulus. He told me what you've done. Yeah, Chris won't be bothering him anymore. He was once my closest friend on Earth. How are you? Well, uh, I... Duncan. <laughs> I'm fine now. Yeah. Hey, buddy. Let's not forget you're on holy ground here. How you doing, my friend? Good right. to see you. Yeah, well, how you finding Paris? Well, I like the Parisian ladies quite a bit. Oh. Yeah. Still dealing with this little language barrier, though. Trying to figure out just quite how to break the ice. Will you excuse us? Oh, I believe they need to break the ice. I wasn't always a priest, you know. When I was a young man, the first thing you had to do when introduced to a woman was compliment her father's horse. That, well, that probably doesn't help you. Uh, no, not a whole lot. <laughs> oh, no. Let me tell you a story. I want to lock you in a hotel room with me for a week. Yeah, well, maybe I should send you away more often. <laughs> Duncan, I love my new job. I like to stay here, just for a while. You want some company? <laughs> I'd love them, but yeah, yeah. Oh. but only if you want to. Oh, Paris, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, I guess I could uh, hang out here for a while. It's a good job, huh? Great job. Great. I like being kept. Kept? Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, I think I'm going to uh, hang out on the barge, catch up on my reading while you bring home the bacon. Barge? What barge? Oh, I forgot to tell you about the barge. <laughs> no self-respecting museum curator would live anywhere else. Ah, so I slave away all day while you sunbathe on a barge. Is that it? Yeah. Yeah, but just think of how rested I'll be. <laughs> Do you want to 